How's it going, Dave here, and in today's video I've got a bit of a Halloween special. I'm going to be showing you how to create some really spooky chords. So, let's get straight into it. So, the goal of the spooky chords is to freak your listener out, so the best way to do that is to use really, really tense intervals. So, the best tense intervals you can use in your chords to spook your listeners out are the minor second. And that is kind of like the Jaws theme. Think Jaws. It has a really, really spooky sound there. You've got the flat third or minor third. You've got the flat fifth or the sharp fourth, depending on the chord you're playing. This is probably the darkest of all the intervals. The tritone is otherwise known as, and if you didn't know already, this interval was actually back in the day, like maybe in the 1600s, I think, banned in churches because it was uh, known as the devil's interval. We've got the sharp fourth or the flat fifth there, or the tritone, whatever you want to call it. We've got the flat sixth or sharp fifth, depending on the chord that you're playing. And then we've also got the flat ninth interval, which is also a very spooky sounding interval. Okay. So those intervals are all absolutely essential to creating some really spooky sounding dark chords. One other thing that's really essential are the effects that you're using. You may have noticed the effects that I'm using on my guitar. So let me talk you through my signal chain real quick. So I am using a chorus, first of all. That's pretty good for creating a spooky vibe, but it's probably not the most important effect. The next effect that I'm using is a reverse delay. So a reverse delay actually kind of works like a normal delay, but the delay or the echo is played in reverse. It's a really cool sound and when you hear ghosts in movies or in video games, that's the kind of similar effects that they're using to create the ghost's voice. So I thought that was a really cool effect we could use on our guitar. And right at the end of the signal chain is a nice long tail reverb which adds an element of atmosphere to your sound. So let's take a listen to how maybe just a standard E minor chord sounds without the effects. So let's turn these off. Okay, sounds pretty plain, but with the effects, you'll see how much of a difference this actually makes. There you go. It sounds way spookier already, and I've not even had to use any of those spooky intervals just yet. So we're gonna get even spookier in a minute. So our first chord that we're gonna be playing is an E minor add flat nine chord. So what we're doing is we're playing an E minor chord, just like we did just now, and we're taking our middle finger or our ring finger if you play your E minor like this, and we're just moving it up on the D string to the third fret. And that third fret is our flat nine. Yeah, so we're playing an E minor, add flat nine. There you go, as you can hear, that flat nine has made the chord sound very spooky. So let's move on to our second chord. The second chord is a very, very, very essential chord for horror music. It's the diminished seventh chord, and it looks like this, and it sounds like this. So what we're doing is we're playing the low E string open uh, for most of the I think in fact all of the chords were ringing out this low E string in this video. Um, then we're playing the first fret of the A string, the second fret of the D string, and the, we're leaving the G string open and playing the second fret of the B string. And if we want to, we can play the uh, open E string as well. Yeah. And the great thing about this chord is if we move up and play a minor third higher, so that's three frets higher, and then three frets higher again, and again. We get this really spooky sound. And we can go down as well in three fr in uh, increments of minor thirds. Really cool. So there you have it, the diminished seventh is our second chord. Really, really, really good chord to use for horror music. The next chord is the augmented chord. And the augmented chord also sounds really tense and spooky, but it's a lot different to a diminished chord and it has a bit of a different vibe to it. Uh, so let's take a listen to how it sounds. Okay, so what we're doing is we're playing the low E string, open, seventh fret of the A string, sixth fret of the D string, and the fifth fret of the G and B strings, and you're doing a little bar there with those, those two strings with your index finger, so. Okay, and one other cool thing you can do with the augmented chord, just like the diminished chord, is you can move it up in thirds, this time major thirds, not minor thirds, so that's increments of four frets. 
So we can move it up four frets to the 11th fret. So back down, and we can go down four frets to the third fret. We can even go up four frets again. Yeah, very interesting sound there. So that's quite spooky. The next chord is the E7 flat nine chord. So the E7 flat nine chord, we are playing the low E string, and then we're playing with our middle finger the second fret of the A string, then the third fret of the D string, first fret of the G string, and the fourth, uh, the third fret of the B string. So it sounds like this. very, very tense chord, again, because we're using that flat nine interval. So something you should know about the E7 flat nine is that on these four strings, the A, D, G, and B strings, we're playing a diminished seventh chord. And if you remember from earlier in the video when I talked about diminished seventh chords, you can move them up in increments of three frets. So if we leave this low E ringing out, get this cool sound like that. Very, very spooky. So let's move on to our next chord. We've got two left and this penultimate one is the E5 sharp 11 chord. So a sharp 11 is the same as a sharp fourth or a flat fifth or a tritone, that really essential uh, dark interval. So we're playing an E minor chord essentially here, um, but then we're adding our ring finger onto the third fret of the G string. Okay. So open, two, two, three, open, open. Okay, that third fret there is our sharp 11 chord, uh, interval. There you go, very tense sound. And then the final chord that we are going to be playing is an E7 sus flat two chord, I think. So we are playing basically low E string, seventh fret of the uh, A string, we're playing the open D string, so that open D is our seventh, then we're playing the ninth fret of the G string, so we've got three E's already, E, E, D, E, then we're playing the sixth fret of the B string, and that's our flat second there, okay? And then for the high E string, you could either ring out the open E string, or we could add the fifth in, uh, which is at the seventh fret of the high E string. Yeah, let me get this sound. Oh, let's try that again. Or you could take your ring finger off the seventh fret of the high E string and let the high E string ring out. And that has a really cool sound as well. So there you have it. That's how you can uh, spook all your friends this Halloween with some cool dark, tense sounding chords. So if you enjoyed the video, click like. Let me know what you thought down in the comments. Do you have any other particular chords that sound really spooky that we can uh, terrorize our friends with? And then subscribe to my channel as well. Make sure you hit that notification bell. And this was all about chords, this video. So maybe you're interested in writing really, really cool chord progressions. Well, if you are, head to the description and I'm giving away the first two chapters of my book, Chord Charisma, for free. Those first two chapters are gonna show you how to write a basic chord progression at first, but then it's gonna show you how to really blow people's minds uh, with your jazzy sound by adding extensions to those chords. So we're gonna add things like sixth, seventh, ninths, eleventh, and thirteenths to those chords. And it's really gonna make your chord progression sound more sophisticated. So if that sounds interesting to you, definitely head to the description and check that out. And also, if you enjoy my videos, uh, I have a Patreon page where you can go and donate. And you don't have to, but it does help the channel out and the money goes towards giving me more time to produce these videos so there'll be more content for you in the future. Hope you enjoyed the video and I'll catch you in the next one. See you later.